What is going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheets Haber. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, I had, didn't play DFS, but I got some moving done. I uh, hung out with my girlfriend a little bit, hung out with some friends, played some beach tennis. And, uh, you know, I actually had a really good, uh, finally a really good DFS week for baseball last week, which, which okay. really brought me back. And I, and I, I came close again. I had, I, you know, I was one of those one homer away things on FanDuel for, for some of some big tournaments. Cause I, I played the Kluber at seven K who was awesome. And then I had the stack with the, uh, the Yankees that with the right Yankees and then the Dodgers that, that just ended up just missing, but a uh, good day, good weeks overall, uh, good NBA slates too. I actually did well on the showdowns and all that stuff, but I haven't, uh, I didn't play this weekend. She's tell us a little bit how you did, and then we'll uh, jump into the slate. Yeah, I played this weekend. Didn't really have much to show for it. You know, did okay in golf, not not great. Uh, didn't do well in baseball, um, and uh, did pretty decently in the M- MMA. Actually, I think I lost a little bit overall for this weekend, and uh, ready to get after it today. All right, let's do it. Um, I'm gonna you can share your screen whenever you're ready, and we'll oh, go yeah. my game and talk through what we are thinking of for this. Pretty pretty small slate, um, to be honest with you. It's, yeah, uh, it's, but you know what? Hey, and, and everybody, pay attention to the uh, to the start time. It's yeah. um, it's six forty, right? So, and it, uh, and because of that, I will be live at five forty five. I can't speak to yours, but I'll yeah, no, I should I, that sh- I should be good for that as well. Good, good. great. Uh, let me uh, my screen up here, and here we go. Um, yeah, it's it's a weird little slate. It's 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 weird because we, we got used to the Mondays, right? And, and NBA started towards the end of the year. They just were playing like twelve game days. So coming back from after the weekend, it, I was ready for something bigger. And and then when I looked at the slate uh, late last night, I was like, oh, we got we got this nice little one here. So all right, uh, let's start off with Miami and Arizona. Uh, I think you can make a pretty good argument for both these pitchers, and I think you can make an argument for stacking Miami on this kind of a slate. Uh, I am sort of stuck in between all of those things. I don't feel great about any of it, but I do feel like Gallon has upside. I feel like Pablo Lopez is probably the best pitcher on the slate uh, in terms of, you know, fantasy production. It's close. Uh, I think they're both very, very uh, reasonable, but I would, I would take some shots because we know Gallon has a wide range of outcomes all the time when he pitches. And I would probably take some shots with some Miami, some Miami bats, especially Jesus Sanchez. So that's where I stand on this one. How about you? Yeah, um, I don't think that any pitcher on this slate is just kind of a must-have. So mm-hmm. I'm probably going to just, you know, try to play the ownership game a little bit because I do. I do think that Gallon is going to be. Yeah, be I would imagine the mo- if not the most popular, at least certainly competing for that role. Um, with with the, um, I just don't know who the other one's going to be. I, more people going to play Bass, and we're going to play 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 Lopez. I'm not sure. But um, but but Gowan at seventy six hundred is really uh, <laughs> certainly a good point for dollar play. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's certainly really really cheap. But like with everything else in baseball construction, you have to see what you're going to pair, you know, with your hitting. I, I do I do like Gowan. I do like Lopez. I didn't quite get to the uh, Miami um, stack um, for. Look, I wouldn't be me if I didn't suggest maybe some leverage uh, for on Arizona just for fun, right? On a short slate, um, so I'm probably going to end up with a little of that, but not in my big my not certainly not in my big buy-ins. Mm-hmm. I think that this that this game is going to be either pitching or I don't know if I'm I, not that I can do. I don't think I'm going to get to the Miami in, in like big buy-ins though. Yeah, I, I'm I'm still thinking about it. It's just I, I'm trying to find ways to get different on these slates and. I actually think it's a pretty good spot. It's probably worth noting that Zach Gallen has been the most stacked against pitcher in all of his starts. And now he's had a few, look, he's been good. He's not, he's been special and incredible or anything like that. And he had some tough matchups. He had the Mets twice and the Dodgers, but it is weird when a guy who's the most popular to stack against all of a sudden becomes the chalky pitcher. It's like one of those things where it's like, your brain doesn't exactly know what to do with it. I'm just, I just keep going. Ah, I don't know. Maybe this is a spot where he does sort of lose a little bit. And I like, I like the lineup better in, in Miami than I used to. So maybe, maybe not a full stack, but I certainly like the idea of Soler, Sanchez, and Jazz, maybe more on Fandle because his price on DraftKings is crazy. Um, but I, I just think it's an interesting way to get different. Anyway, we can move on to uh, to Baltimore and the Twins. What do you got here, Sheets? Yeah, you know what I got? I got um, – I think I, I think I like both, both hitting, both hitting the environments here. 
I mean, I like the hitting environment, and I think I like both sets of, uh, of bats, um, uh, both Minnesota and Baltimore. Chris Paddock, he's – he's and, and yet, <laughs> I think Chris Paddock is a totally reasonable pivot, and I think Tyler Wells is a totally reasonable <laughs> – uh, 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 whatchamacallit, value pitcher if you need it, which again, now we're back to that old discussion is do you need it? Like, do you need a, right. do you, need, what, what, what is, what is paying 5,100 do for you? Um, Panic, I suppose, is fine. I just, I just, you know, I, I just never seem to, to get him right. But it's not a question of getting him right. He's never really done anything. You know, like his last game was really good, but I mean, even, even that is not, you know, great, you know. Um, so he's certainly a good, a decent price pivot off of off of Gallon. I do imagine that Pat is going to be much lower on than Gallon, but I don't know, man. I I, I kind of like the, the hitting side of this. I, I kind of like a little bit of Minnesota. I kind of like Baltimore, and uh, that's kind of where I am in this game. Yeah, I I think this is a really hard game to 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 try and go on because I could make all the. I mean, I agree with everything you said basically. Like I I think that these are to, two totally viable options on this kind of a slate uh stacks i think the pitchers are both viable if you need the money like we talked like you said but i don't i don't i don't feel excited about it like i don't feel like i really am dying to go out there and stack baltimore and the twins but they're on my list you know they're they both i think especially the twin side of it would be my pr preference and i think you're going to get some decent ownership there correa i think will be owned i think by the end of the day guys like Polanco, Arias, Buxton will all have some decent ownership. I don't think that you're going to see crazy ownership outside of the, the middle of the lineup for uh, Baltimore. I think Mancini and Mountcastle and Santander will, will have a good chance to be owned. I don't think the rest of them are going to be particularly owned. Maybe Austin Hayes as well. But they are really cheap, so I, I think they deserve to be to be considered. And just not, not all that excited, excited about stacking them myself, but I, I, do, I do understand it. Um, I, you know, it's one of those days where I'm like, God, is there anybody I really want to stack? And I, I, I really don't feel great about any one team. Um, so we're going to have to figure that one out as, as we go along here. Um, no. The next one we've got is the Yankees and Blue Jays. And I just want to point out to everybody, I keep saying this about Stripling. And it doesn't mean he can't get roughed up. It doesn't mean there's something can't happen. This guy is like, before he got hurt, was a really, really, really good pitcher like about to hit another tier of pitcher where I'm not saying he was going to be an all-star every year, but he might've made some all-star games. He's the, he has the ability, he has that ability in him. And I know him well because of the Dodgers background. And when you see him pitching, and this is the first time that Vegas sort of seems to have caught up because every time he's pitched, it's been like five and a half run total for the opposing team. Oh, let's stack the hell out of the opposing team. And everybody in our chat, everybody we uh, on our site has been trying to trying to stack against this guy. And it would have done absolutely no good. Any of those times. And I think, um, oh, maybe the one, the one game where he only pitched the one inning, but that was a relief appearance. Um, anyway, I, um, I, I am just on the side of uh, finally Vegas got it right, and they only give the Yankees a 4.1 total. However, the Yankees have been too good for, to me for, for, for me to just ignore them. The problem is that everybody's going to play them, and I just don't think that's necessarily right. I think I would rather take a shot with a Toronto stack if I had to choose between the two. Um, other than that, I'm not really interested I, in a normal slate. I would not be interested in either of these stacks on this particular slate. I'm definitely open to both of them, but I'm leading Toronto. That's me. Yeah. I like them both a little bit. Um, uh, the same type of sentiment, not, not jumping out of my shoes, excited about it. Um, just right. because of the ownership. Um, and like you said, both these guys can, you know, they're, they're freaking competent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're not gonna, they I'm going to score 10 runs off me due to these guys, you know? So, so um, uh, if I get to Yankees, I don't know, maybe, maybe I, I was about to say, if I get to Yankees, fine. Maybe that's not fine. Like, like may, may, maybe, and maybe I get lazy when I say stuff like that. Maybe you're, we're supposed to actually like aggressively fade both, both mm -hmm. these teams, you know, maybe, maybe that's kind of the way to approach a stack like this, especially from the hand built, you know, attack is you, you say, listen, these are going to be the highest on guys. Instead of saying, well, I'll be under whatever. Maybe we should like really try to make a point to not play them, especially in the bigger stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I actually agree with that for the most part. Now I don't mean that I wouldn't have like a two or a three man because then I can go with a different stack. And, and and not have to, I just think as a five man stack to stack either of these teams, it's going to be really hard to do that profitably. If you do it a lot, it's, you could probably do it with the blue Jays because you get three low owned bats at the bottom of the lineup. 
with the Yankees, I don't think you're going to have low owned anywhere except for maybe kind of Falefa. Like, I, I just don't know how you could profitably do it. Maybe Rizzo gets lower owned. I don't know. I can't see how that happens, but I don't know. It's, it's just, it, I, I kind of like what you're saying. I don't know if this is a full stacking slate. I do want to point out again on Friday on the big slate on FanDuel and the big one, not one player from the same team, the guy won with in the main buy-in. And just to show you how hard that is to do, only like six people are doing it in the whole tournament. And it happened again. The non-stacking has absolutely had its way early on in the season. And there are hardly anybody who doesn't, who don't stack. So when we look at slates like this, you don't need to five man stack on a slate like this. So maybe that's what I would do is take a couple bats from one of these sides, probably the, the blue Jays and, and then go from there. Cause I don't feel like I need to play these guys at 20 plus percent, 35% each. It just, it just feels wrong. Um, but there's not a whole lot of great options and people like the name value. So they're going to end up being really, really popular. Yeah. Um, all right. What do you, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the, the Braves against the Mets? Yeah. So as usual, um, the presence of Max Fried renders probably the game unplayable. <laughs> like he's, uh, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's, this is the usual thing we say, right? He's a good real life pitcher. Doesn't have all that much strikeout upside. And, you know, you really don't want to play him unless, you know, unless there's a good reason to. And now he's, he's got a matchup against a team that doesn't really strike out either. Right. So, so you have like double, double issues with, uh, with playing Max Fried. Um, so I'm probably going to be off of that, but certainly uh, I'm not going to be stacking the Mets or pretty much anybody against him. Um, so that that's, that's out. And Chris Bassett is projecting to be like a good play, but I mean, do I really, do I really want to be going after the Braves, especially if Acuna is playing? I don't, I don't know about that. So mm -hmm. You know, Bass is just like, just like another guy as far as I'm concerned. And it's another one of those guys I'm going to just check the ownership of between Lopez and, and, uh, and, uh, and Gallon and, and maybe some others. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Bass, it's fine. But, I mean, this is uh, one of those middling type matchups where you have two good, you know, good pitchers but two good hitting teams. So, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll hope, I hope, it's a, hope it ends up like some 4-2 final or something and then I don't, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I hear you there. Um, I, I, if I wanted to get like, look, if it wasn't 50 degrees in New York and, you know, the wind blowing in and all that, I think I would take shots with Atlanta against Bassett. I think Bassett's a good pitcher, but I do, I don't think he's this unhittable guy. So I, I, I don't have a problem on, on smaller slates taking shots against them. It just doesn't look like the, the, the right kind of conditions to do it. Um, I definitely prefer Freed over Bassett personally. I understand that Bassett's K rate has people more interested. I don't care. I just feel like every time Max Fried goes out there, you're going to get like, I mean, you almost every time you're going to get somewhere between 15 and 30 points. And that feels good enough for me. Um, so I, I also think he has a little more strikeout upside than people give him credit for. Um, he's sort of improved over the last, you know, since the middle of last season, his K rate has, has, has gone up a little bit. Um, you know, that's, that's what I've got here. I've got, I've got Freed ahead of Bassett. Um, and I do think Freed is probably one of my favorite pitchers. The problem is, like you said, not a high strikeout Yankee team and a team that's got, this Mets, isn't the, Yankee, I'm sorry, the, the Mets team, sorry. Um, this isn't the Mets from last year. This isn't the Mets from recent years. They, they have some actual hitters in their lineup, but if you're really going to play, you know, a couple of, they're going to play the two lefties against him. Probably that, that's probably too, too many. I mean, Freed is really tough. Like, yeah. Um, so I, I do like Freed. He's currently my favorite pitcher on the slate. Um, oh, okay. But I don't think it's like, it's not by a lot and it's not an exciting feeling. It's just, it's just how I feel. Um, all right. Now we get to the interesting one where I think the run total for the Mariners is low. Um, that's my first instinct on this game. And I think that Oda Rizzi finally had a good outing and I've always been like on, on, on both sides of Oda Rizzi. He's burned me. He saved yeah. me. Um, I've stacked against him. I've done all kinds of, you know what I mean? It's just, he, yep. he gives up a lot of hard contact and against this team, I happen to like the lineup a little bit for, for, for the Mariners today. And I think that people will play Houston and I'm just going to remember, remind everybody now this might be the slate to do it because it's such a small slate. We don't have a lot of great options, but we had full slates for the last three years, at least as long as me and you have been, have been doing these. And every time the same thing comes up, with two guys. It was Kikuchi when he used to pitch for Seattle and it was Marco Gonzalez. And I want to just point out that I'm going to go to it real quick to see if my numbers back up. 
that I don't remember Marcos Gonzalez ever. I don't remember that, that those Houston stacks ever winning one slate and they play each other a lot. So he's got a pretty good history with them. Um, let's take a quick look real quick at his BVP numbers. I actually hit well off of them. They just don't hit any home run. So they, they're they, 143 at bats hitting 303, which is unbelievably well, but they've got one home run and 143 at bats. So maybe this is a slate where you can get away with the one home run and 143 at bats because it's such a small slate. But in general, this is the exact kind of spot I would stay away from on a big slate. But maybe because it's a smaller slate, we can do it. I still tend to lean a little bit of Seattle above Houston. That's my that's me personally. How about you? Yeah, well, I, it's hard to even comment on on Houston until we actually know that he's pitching. I, I, he's 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 um he is considered the probable starter now. Okay. Because they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were talking about whether he was going to start or not. Yeah. Okay. For what it's worth, um, he killed them last time they played too, by the way. Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, your point's well taken. I had this, again, my, my memory is really bad, but, but I, I had this feeling that, that Kikuchi got, Kikuchi, for example, got lit up by Houston the other day or something when I tried to play Kikuchi or was it the, I don't know, whatever it was. Well, no, it was, I, I, was talking, I was talking about when Houston, when Kikuchi. No, was I know that. Now. I know All that. bets are off now. Yeah, I know that. I, I'm not counting it as the same thing anymore. Um, I think that um, I think Houston is going to uh, to garner a lot of ownership uh, today um, mm -hmm. alongside of the Yankees um, and Toronto. So if, if you have any any um, trepidations about Houston, uh, I think I think they're a very, very viable fade. Uh, I, I, you know, they're, they're show, look, they're showing up for me as, as one of the top point per dollar slates and stacks and, and raw points too, which means that they're going to be popular. Right. And, mm -hmm. and baseball, that's what, that's what you do. You know, you find out, you know, and unfortunately that's the way it is. You know, you, you, you figure out who's going to, who looks the best, realize that everybody's going to see the same thing that you do. And then the real decision is whether they're going to be owned enough or too little or too much to fade them or whatever. That's, that's the way you play DFS in all sports, you know, and mm -hmm. especially in baseball, the way results distribute, as we've discussed, literally 77,000 slates in a row, you know? So, so if, if a team like Houston is going to be, is going to be really chalky, I mean, just, just fade it. You know I mean? it's, it's not like they look that great. Like you said, I mean, Marco Gonzalez, he's, you know, he's got tricks and Houston, Houston, uh, Houston is, is, doesn't really do that well against pitchers with tricks as, as you, as you, as you pointed mm -hmm. out. So, so uh, yeah, Houston does rate to be a great stack, but that's another one I'll probably try to try to fade and try to do something else. You know, um, mm -hmm. Seattle is interesting because I didn't I didn't get to that at all in my first look, but and, and again for this exact same logic, if that's the case, they're probably going to be one of the three or four lowest owned stacks on the whole board. Especially and who the hell who the hell is Oda Rizzi? You know what I mean? Like you know, like you said, I mean, listen. You, you've had success on both both ends of him, you know, mm -hmm. fading him when he's chalk, playing him when he's low old, you know, whatever it is. And and he, you know, he's certainly prone to get lit up sometimes. And mm -hmm. and if you have a six game slate with one stack having nobody over five percent owned, for example, right. you know, um, I would totally take a shot at that. Absolutely, yeah, I, I feel good about it, and I also feel good about it because everybody's overpriced for Seattle or whatever overpriced means. I mean, you have Ty Francis, 6K. Like, come on. Um, Jesse Winker, 5. Is that really true? He's 6,000. <laughs> yeah, and Winker and Suarez, 5.4. Crawford is 5.6. Frazier is 4.6. Like, it's crazy. The guys who should be the minimum are 3.7. Like, no one's going to play them. Um, I, I think that that's just that's a, that's a good enough angle for me to take. I don't love full stacking against Houston in that bullpen in general, but I don't care on this slate this size. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my shots with some Seattle bats for sure today um again not the maybe not the optimum result these are nothing will show up in any optimals that you build because of the pricing um but I, just think about it because there is there is definitely a path there um all right you want to talk about tampa bay and oakland in another game that i feel the run total looks a little low to me I'm almost like i'm missing something um these guys are fine pitchers they're not anything special in my opinion and i can't quite figure out why this game has a six and a half run total Sheets, you want to tell me what you're thinking about in this game? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I think I think Rasmussen is is certainly a reasonable option. Yeah, you know, nothing nothing wrong with that. Uh, and I just and, and and instinctively, again, without even looking, actually, I am looking a little bit. I imagine Tampa's got to be a good play. 
um, as far as the hitting goes. Again, if you're looking for something other than Houston and Yankees and Toronto, I mean, this is this is naturally seems to be the next place for me to go, right? Mm-hmm. Is is Tampa against uh, you know semi semi fishy pitching option, right? Um, so uh, yeah, I, I I think Tampa is pretty pretty decent hitting uh, option and Rasmussen. Look, it, it's it's you know what, like you say, it's kind of tough to click that button. I guess it's tough to click him at eighty three hundred. But as we've already discussed, there's no there's nobody on this slate which is who you really have to have, you know. Right. So yeah, but the, but then again, like you you want play Rasmussen? Do you want to you want to find the money for one of these other? Maybe not. I mean, Oakland's no good. What's wrong with Rasmussen getting fifteen to twenty fantasy points? Yeah, I mean it's I don't think he has to. I, I mean he's got a ceiling. Like he's he's got stuff. Like okay. it's just he he's a little bit all over the map. Um, it is the right matchup, but I, I, I'm having a hard time believing that no one's going to play him, especially coming off of a really like awesome outing that he just had against Seattle. Yeah, they'll have to play him. I think, I think they're going to play a little bit of him. Um, and I think he's fine. It's not going to be my preferred. I am going to always pick on the ace, so he'll end up in some of my lineups. But he's not my preferred guy to generally, you know, like I, that, I, that I love over these other guys. My, my two favorite pitchers on the slate are, are Lopez and Freed. Um, and, and I think Tampa Bay and Seattle is probably what I'm going to do in terms of my stacks. One thing that we get with, 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 with the Rays, I, I talk about this a lot about the way that your team is scoring points really matters. If you have a bunch of guys who are hitting singles and stuff like that, you're just not going to accrue enough points. What's great about the Rays is they have guys with some pop. And more importantly, they, they'll just run everybody. They ran up five runs in the ninth inning. They did a double steal the other night. And it, it literally is the only reason I cashed with that lineup. It's crazy, but that, that they, they, just, they just run a, a lot. You have the Rosarena runs, Brandon Lau runs, Wander Franco will run, Kevin Kiermeyer runs, Manuel Margot will occasionally run, Taylor Walls will occasionally run. And then you have Brett Phillips who will run. Like they just have a lot of guys who will run. And uh, on right. slates like this, Sometimes there's not always going to be, you know, a bunch of home runs. This, the tournament I won the other day, there was four home runs in the entire slate. And if you can't get the power, go for the speed. So I, I like the idea of the Rays in Seattle as my as my two stacks today to be off the board. And I like Lopez and Freed as my favorite pitchers. Any any sort of final thoughts do you have before we get out of here? Yeah. Um, I think this, this has actually been very, very useful for me because because when I really talk through this with you, I think that's I think that's that's kind of the plan to find something like a Seattle like you like you talked about and and just kind of go with it on, on especially on your big buy in and, and maybe even maybe Tampa's enough like maybe you don't have to play Seattle yeah you know? maybe. maybe Tampa's enough differentiation um, maybe you get lucky and, and the Yankees uh, they they put somebody cheap in their lineup or something which makes them stack people stack them more or something like that yeah. Um, um, but yeah, and, and the funny thing is the Yankee Toronto, it's one of those games that kind of self-correlates. Like you get, you get a bad umpire, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe you get lucky and both teams don't do that well. You get some weird wind or whatever, and maybe, or you get some weird weather, maybe both teams don't, I don't know. But, uh, I think the more I think about it also, I think you're right. I think that the, I think that Lopez is just, is just the, uh, I don't want to say the, the safest um but i guess I so you know like like freed's the best pitcher i guess yeah but but the mets are a good or a good team right i mean arizona stinks you know, it's they're, like, they're really bad and, and and for what it's worth like it's not like lopez gives us a reason not to not to believe in him he all he does is pitch well every game <laughs> like, listen they stink and they're at they're they're i presume miami's still a park where runs go to die you know it used to be um yeah. And and, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm a little bit hesitant to play Miami as far as the uh, as far as the hitting goes. My, um, my my only counter to that though is that you're getting that pretty much everywhere else too. You know what I mean? You've got 50 right, right. degree temperatures and for the Mets. You've got in the Mets game. You've got uh, Oakland in, in the low 60s, except, except for in Houston. <laughs> and then Houston, you have yeah, but Houston is has turned into a, an extreme pitcher's park, like. Is that true? Um, I didn't even know that. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's it's really gone the other. It's really they really did their job and made it into a pitcher's park over a hitter's park. Now there really isn't a good hitting spot on the slate. The closest you got is Baltimore, which is again they they just re, they just revamped that one to make it a better pitcher's park too. So it's it, there's not like an exciting hey try to target this, but there is the best of the options and. I like right. the idea of playing Tampa Bay. I don't love that the weather's there. You do have some wind blowing out. And I like the idea of playing Seattle in a dome. 
I'm, I'm going to be very high on the do dome teams early in the year, just because I, I don't want to yeah. mess with 20 mile an hour winds blowing in like sheets. It still shocked me. People are playing like 30% of guys who are like 5k or 6k trying that are righties against the lefty trying to hit into 30 mile an hour winds in 50 degree weather. Like, I just don't know what you're doing. If you're playing DFS and doing that, if you're making a conscious choice and you're hand building a lineup and you see that you've got to immediately pull the plug on that guy. Now, can that guy occasionally hit an opposite field home run in that situation? Sure. But it's absolutely the wrong way to play DFS in my opinion, if you're not paying attention to that stuff. Well, and here's a little secret. Okay. And this is, you know, this is again, from someone who just looks at these projections like a lot. Um, I can't really speak a hundred percent for everybody, but um, from what I see, they, with the exception of like the, like the Wrigley games, what the, that they know, like 10 hours beforehand that what, what the weather, what the weather is going to be or whatever, yeah. they do not adjust for winning not enough. projections. Yep. They just don't. Absolutely I mean, agreed. And, and it's could be, you want to know how I know that from our process of doing this, when I every day come say, Dude, I freaking love Minnesota it's showing up as like the greatest play ever. And you're like, dude, it's 30 freaking degrees there. And the wind is blowing in exactly against the wind. What are you doing? And I'm like, right. And in my head, I'm like, well, why is they projecting this? Because they, I'm telling you, they don't, they, they, they don't adjust for the non-obvious wind games. You know what I mean? Right. Like they just don't. So, so that's why you have to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a brain and look through it a little bit and, 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 and right. make your own adjustments. Right. And I mean, there was, there was one time when I, when I worked for our, for Roto Grinders and, and I, I was saying how this Cubs game, because it was what, you know, the Cubs are the obvious one, but it was 20 miles an hour blowing in from center field. And it was like 50 degrees or 48 degrees, something like that. And I, and I was saying that you can't play anybody here on a full slate. And, and the Cubs won that day, I think it was like 16 to one. And I don't think anybody, I think they had one double and everybody else had singles. Nobody had more than 10 fantasy points. So the really? way you get runs. So, so, so my little, my little four, two, one, one, cutesy, whatever but, stuff outscores these guys by a mile who score 15 runs. And they only scored, my team is only scoring four runs because right. they're getting the, the kind of guys who are scoring in the way that you are going to help you win. That's tournament. right. Anyway. Um, anyway, I think this stuff was helpful. Uh, Cheats. Uh, good job. And for everybody at TrueDFS, I want to say good luck tonight and we'll see you at 545 Eastern. Yeah, sounds good.